So you want some broken team comps for true Zenorian, huh? All right, so here's one that is kind of like a modification of an original team comp I made that is actually pretty close to the team used to cheese the Colosseum early. Essentially what you do is you have a Dragoon's War Spear Wyvern get ice conferred by typically a sorceress. And then you also have some units use quick impetus to have it get its dragoons dive off and the ice conferral freezes but i modified this team so that it does it twice to pretty much kill everything it runs into and i also added a thief to disable things that prevent the enemy group from getting frozen so all right so a long time ago and by long time i mean two weeks <laughs> i made a video showing the ice conferral on a griffin for like griffin row cleave right and you could cleave either the front or the back row and freeze everything and that was a decent build for the demo okay but this is big boy time and we have big problems now so now we have an aoe that hits everything uh so first of all where do you get dragoon's war spear um actually i guess i'll have to leave i just made this team comp over here <laughs> <laughs> but I will leave for you. I will return to the overworld. I didn't save it. I made it in this mission. So let's go out of here and let me show you where to get Dragoon's War Spear. So as soon as you beat the Scarlet Quest, you can go to Drakenland, Dragonland, or Elvenland. And in the Elvenland, if you go down this way by the mine and do this mission that's level 15, it's not that hard, you can get the spear you need. And then to get the other items, so let's first let's go down, let's go over the items, let's go over like what you need. All right, you get this from that area I showed you. You get this, and this is necessary because it gives you attack, uh, bonus damage, and true strike, so you hit everything. You get the Heaven Wyvern Reigns from the Divine Shard Shop, so let's go to that. So here, it's sold for I think 20 shards. I'll travel, I'll show it, might as well. So I think it's like 20. You have to have other things unlocked first though, so you have to get it kind of late. Yeah, here it is. This is the one you want. And then you also want the white cat ear hood. So note that you get plus one passive point and it costs four to do this. You get an action point and you allow the target to act again. So those are the major combo pieces. So let's go over it again. All right, so you have your nuke set. Uh, pretty much disable literally everything but Dragoon Dive and Aerial Wing. Uh, this is the combo. You Aerial Wing, Dragoon Dive. It's pretty straightforward. That's pretty much literally all that we want to be doing. So this is the first combo piece. Uh, I also have Dove Plume for higher initiative and Carnelian so that I get to be able to do this twice. Uh, so the first time... So when I get Impetist, when I get Quick Impetist, she will gain another active point, putting her at four, allowing her to do this twice. Okay, so we get to do it twice, great. And then this utility, let's look at the build for this. Uh, it has optional, optional. Uh, Dragon Bone Staff is fantastic for this because it gives you passive points. Your initiative doesn't matter because you're proccing off of an ally, so activates after ally uses active skill. This is the ally, super high initiative, guaranteed to go first, basically, uses the active skill. Uh, so Dragon Bone Staff reduces initiative, where do you get the dragon bone staff? I will show you. <laughs> you get those down here. I think one of these desert towns. So once you go to Dragonland pretty early on, one of these towns has it. There's there are several that sell it. So this one sells dragon bone shields. Uh, one of these towns. Let's find the actual town so you know for sure. It might be this one. Yeah, here you go. So here's the dragon bone staff. And that is in the armor at Gan Rafelt Town, which is right here. So a lot of combo pieces. Okay, back to the team. <laughs> okay, so we have that. So that's how you get your extra passive point. Or you can just use Lapis. Uh, that's fine too. I have Silken Scarf for Avoid or for Evasion, but you don't need it. I have Golden Egg for more gold. You don't need it. These are purely optional. This is actually optional too. You, the gist of it is you need one passive point from this, putting you at three. You need to be on advanced classes, so you have base two. And then you need some source of plus one passive point. Now you can run, actually I was about to say you can run more to get beyond that, but you can't go before. All right, 
So those are these two. This is the basic combo. This activates quick. Note that Dragoon Dive is a charge attack. So when it says charge, you have to take two actions. First action is the initiation, which I believe gets aerial winged. Uh, it's either before or after, but you start it. It's like solar beam. You have to take in sunlight for a turn and then you shoot it. Uh, but this allows you to do it all at once, allows them to act again, grants AP plus one. And then here is the big combo. This also has Dragon Bone Staff because it just combos off of things and it's only going to be attacking frozen things typically. I have Ice Bolt set to not frozen because you're gonna AoE freeze things. And then I have Ice Conferral back row flying so it always hits the right target. Uh, add magic damage and freeze to allies next attack, 50 potency. So damage boost plus a freeze, board nuke freeze. Okay, and then we have this guy <laughs> because Thief on promoted class at level 25 gains sneaking edge attack a single enemy with first strike inflicts guard seal and passive seal this is the opening move no matter what so as soon as the match starts you can target a thing that blocks you and the reason why that matters is because when you do the big board nuke if you get blocked if your dragoon dive gets blocked the blocker will get frozen and the blocked target will not so then you'll have one unfrozen enemy this allows you to bypass that and directly target someone who's blocking and he can passive steal a second target before look at his initiative of 63 <laughs> uh, you can bypass you can get rid of two blockers one in any position and another in the front line so typically this is enough and you can change the rules based on what's needed but typically this is enough to disable two blockers and completely freeze an entire enemy group this team comp uh, while modifying certain aspects of like certain units this main like these key three units plus changing the frontliner can basically cheese the coliseum right now uh, but also notes that he has angel plume so that he's insanely fast and then he tailwinds this to 54 initiative so he goes first basically before anything in the game uh, disables two things one off of passive steel one off of sneaking edge and then he sets up this to go next this impetus is this, this magic conferrals this, and then she aerial wings herself for true attack plus more bonus damage, super nukes the entire enemy squad, freezes all of them, and then they can do it again. That's the beautiful part about this build. Because she ends up getting four pass or four active points, she can do it again, and she has four passive points and can conferral a second time. And she also aerial wings a second time. Basically, this group can kill literally anything you send it to attack. And the only case that isn't true is if it gets killed by range assists or if he gets dropped by like some sword fighter or something, but you can switch him out for something else. Or in some cases, like change the order so that she can tank a sword fighter for a hit. She can even avoid tank a sword fighter potentially if it's not a true attack, obviously. Uh, but this basically can do whatever you need it to. And then also you can change the party leader based on what you need. So do you need uh, flying, you can make her the leader. Do you want more stamina? Make the thief the leader. The speed is better. The speed is a little bit better on thief, but you lose flying. You also can teleport for two passive points. So this is just a guaranteed kill wherever you need it on the battlefield. And it's insanely powerful. Now I knew early on that this combo plus a board nuke or an AOE would be cracked, but I didn't realize it'd be this good. <laughs> or this overpowered. Also look at the passive slots too. She's just on Lapis Pendant and optional. Uh, the Silk Hood, sometimes you need Ice Bolt if something's immune to freeze, which is the case in some of these battles. She can still like poke those enemies. Uh, you could also switch this out if, you, if the freeze is not needed for something else. Uh, you could also even uh, gamble, or uh, what is it? That's a gambler's coin ability. Inspiration, plus 30% attack, plus 50% crit on this because it's a true strike so if she goes for crits which she could do right now it's at 13 percent uh, but if she goes for crits that could be huge uh for his weapons i have him on this for initiative plus three the accuracy doesn't really matter you could switch him on to something else there's a lot of utility swords so whatever you whatever the situation calls for but the inventory outside of some of the uh, angel shop items like angel plume is like 20 divine fragments uh, this is like 20 uh, This is 20 so you need to be spending quite a few in order to get this but by the time you're like halfway through Drakenhold 
you'll have enough to buy it. But you can also use this team and modify it as needed to beat the uh, the Coliseum early, and I was able to do so with this team. I did have to use Miracle Fruits on Travis so that I could specifically target key blockers with Sneaking Edge, and I had to do some gimmicks to deal with like one of the team comps that removes buffs. Uh, but basically almost nothing in the main game counters this team, and the only thing that can really kill it is like assist spam. And also once you get five units, you could add a unit that can block like assists so that could be good as well but just these four units can pretty much kill everything now uh, let's show it i know you want to see it <laughs> i know you want to see it so let's show it just have it fight something you have to show it right i can't just explain everything there was one guy that was like you talk about it but you don't show it it's like all right i'll show it you want to see it you don't know what you want to see <laughs> You don't want to see the truth. Everyone thinks they want to see it. Yeah. And they do. Alright, here you go. I'll show it a few times. It's a pretty crazy interaction. So watch how fast it is, too. Sneaking edge. Now he's just going to attack whoever. There's no, like, key target. He can still do that. It hits through evade, too, because it gives true strike. The griff or the wyvern gives itself true strike. So charge... Uh, trigger, next action, goes to the dive, ice conferral, aerial wing combo, board nuke, <laughs> kills all of them. Now if it doesn't kill all of them, they can do it again, and she can heal twice. This is the best part about this. Let's say you take some assist spam damage. She gets to heal twice afterwards. That's that's the icing on the cake, or the topping on the, the pizza, so to speak. Now we, we are taking some damage here. Uh, but you'll probably see what the problem is, right? Sure. But we can mitigate it. Sword fighters. Okay. However, oh, that's right. We're not doing. We're doing back row. Uh, and then he's not doing front row. Yeah. So we could change this. I actually haven't set this, but we can do front row. I haven't tried this before, but in theory, it should work. Yeah, <laughs> in theory and in practice. You can just have a target flyer too, if you if you only have one flyer in this group. Yeah, she can tank that, she's fine, she can guard it. He gets one tapped by those things, so rotating him. Tailwind, Dragoon Drive, it still works the same, you just have to make sure you set your rules. You can just have it always set to flyer, so you don't have to worry about where she is, so if you switch them based on the combat, the result is the same. And then if a dude survives, you get to do it again. And you can also have Travis set to attack someone if they're frozen and below 25% HP, for example, so that he could just last hit here so you don't have to go through the whole process. But she will anyways. So pretty cracked build. <laughs> pretty fun, pretty overpowered. And then also... Let's look at the Valor skills. Oh, that's right. And you can do this if you're a thief. <laughs> you're a thief? Did you know you can fly over rivers now? <laughs> Did you know you can teleport anywhere and you have plunder and you have heal and you have gravity? <laughs> you have literally everything. You have utility, you have healing, you have mobility. This, you can use this over any terrain, including rivers. This is the best part of this kit. You can dive bomb things. This is the best part of this kit. It's super aggressive. I'll make it quick. We don't even need to check it. We already know the result. Even if you take some chip damage, it gets healed away at the end, as long as it's not lethal. And it's not going to be because the only things that hit you are a first of the battle action that happens once. Your initiative is just simply too high for them to ever hit you. Your initiative is like 50 to 60. You're just insanely initiated. <laughs> You're well initiated. But look at here's the combats every combat you're just so fast you just beat everything and in this case where i'm taking 36 um it's probably from a counter attack or something you could probably rearrange the order but 36 i'm not dying right so so yeah that's the build feel free to run this feel free to try to cheese the coliseum with this i was able to do so and i'll see you in the next one peace